Hi, my name is Margaret Posch. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to nested loops. We are going to write the code to print the following pattern here. I just call it pattern one. Anytime you're confronted with a programming problem and it's not obvious how to translate it to Java code, one thing you might consider is to break down the problem into smaller and smaller tasks until they seem quite manageable. So this is what I want to model right here. I start by writing the first version of my pseudocode and it just says print pattern 1. So this is a complete description of my problem but it doesn't translate easily to Java yet so I'm going to break it down in smaller tasks. My version 2 says for each of the rows do the following print the current row. So I no longer have the task of printing the whole pattern. Now I have the task of printing a row over and over again until all the rows are printed. The first line for each of the rows do the following fits very nicely the pattern of a for loop. So I'm making a check here. We know how to write a for loop. If that is not obvious, please check out the videos about for loop. Now I'm focusing on the second part, print the current row. Now I want to break down this problem into smaller tasks. So I could say for each of the rows to the following, print the right amount of circles, print the right amount of dots, print a new line. The last task is easy, we know how to do that. And what we still need to figure out is what is the right amount of circles, what is N1, and what is the right amount of dots, what is N2. We also need to figure out how to print N characters in a row once we know the number we need. For now I want to focus on task A. What are the values of N1 and N2? And in order to find this out, I'm going to draw a table that actually shows me the number of circles, the number of dots for each of the lines. So here is my table. In my first row, I have one circle and four dots. In my second row, I have two circles, three dots, etc. Now that I see what my N1 and what my N2 should be for each of the rows. I need to express my N1 and N2 based on the control variable of the outer loop. Now I have to decide what should my outer loop be. Should it be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4? Should it be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Maybe should I count downwards? When I look at my two number lines, I noticed that N1 would make a very nice sequence for an outer loop. I could say for my integer i is 1, i less or equal than 5, i++, plus plus, and this way it gives me my 5 rows. And in each of my rows, my i takes on the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So here I have my control variable from the outer loop. And I notice that my control variable is exactly the same as N1, exactly the same as the number of circles. That is very convenient. Now the question is, what about N2? And when I look at my control variable i and my N2, I can see my control variable gets bigger and bigger, while my N2 gets smaller and smaller. And I also notice that the sum of i and n2 is always 5. So in my first row, i is 1 and n2 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. In my second row, i is 2 and n2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, etc. And I realize n2 is 5 minus i. And at this point, I figured out what N1 and what N2 is based on a given 
control variable of an outer loop. I can go back to my pseudocode. I checked off what are the values of n1 and n2 and I know that given the header of the outer for loop as counting from 1 to 5, my n1 is i, my n2 is 5 minus i. And now I can write this directly in the steps of my pseudocode. I can say what I need to do is print i circles, print 5 minus i dots, and print a new line. Now we need to figure out how to print n characters in a row. To find a general solution to how to print n characters in a row is start with something concrete. Let's say how to print four circles in a row. And that sounds a lot like a typical for loop example. One thing to keep in mind though is that we are planning code that is going to be executed inside the outer for loop. That means the typical control variable name i is already taken at that point. i is the control variable of the outer loop, so we need a new name for our inner for loop. And by convention, we just take the next letter of the alphabet, which is j. So here I have a for loop integer j is 0, j less than 4, j plus plus, and then we do something, we're going to print a circle. It's not just the character of the lowercase o that we're printing. We're printing the lowercase o, the circle, plus a space to have some margin around the circles and the dots. Otherwise, our pattern would look like a rectangle rather than a square. Now let's look at the task, how to print i circles. For integer j is 0, j is less than i, j++, print the circle. Or if I look at the task, how to print 5 minus i dots, I would go for integer j is 0, j less than 5 minus i, j++, and now I'm printing dots, always with the blank, following afterwards. So at this point, uh, we can check off task B. We figured out how to print n characters in a row. We have for each of the steps in our pseudocode a plan how to translate that to Java. And now we're getting ready to program. Here I opened my IDE. You can see on the left side the pseudocode we developed before, as well as the outer for loop and the code segment we need to print i circles. So here is my main method. All I'm going to do is I'm going to call pattern one and that method does not exist yet so I have to write it as a private static void pattern one. The reason I have to declare my method static is because main is static and the reason I like to declare it private is because there's no need for anybody outside of this class to access pattern one. When it comes to uh, writing the code that prints out pattern one, I just have to follow uh, each of these steps that we defined already. The first one says for each of the rows do the following and we specify that our outer for loop should go from one to five. So I'm doing just that I say for integer i is 1 i is less or equal 5 i plus plus and now inside the body of my for loop I there are three things I'm going to do the first thing is print i circles here we came already up with the code to print i circles so we are going to use that right here I say for integer j is 0 j is less than i j plus plus and we are going to print the circle system out print a circle with a blank afterwards for some spacing so next thing i need to do is print 5 minus i dots that is very analogous 
So here I see four integer, j is zero, j is less than five minus i, j plus plus. And this time we are not printing a circle, this time we are printing a dot, system out print dot. One thing I want to point out is that I can use j again. The reason is j was declared in my for loop and right here when the first for loop terminates j goes out of scope. So there is no j at this point and I can declare my next control variable once again with the name j. So at this point we were printing our circles, we were printing our dots the last thing I need to do is print a new line and that is easy so we say system out print line three tasks we had to complete within our outer for loop task one print the circles task two print the dots task three print the new line let's compile And let's run and there is our pattern one this was it for now see you next time